Welcome to this episode. I am Arda Baydemir, Head of Fire Systems Design in the UK and Ireland. I bring to you today a brief summary of the CPD sessions that Jensen is offering to its existing and potential clients. In this episode, we will discuss sprinkler systems, water mist, gaseous separation and more. For today, we'll start with the sprinkler systems like general points. Um, I'm going to introduce how the sprinkler systems um, and then water mist and gaseous separation systems, their advantages and disadvantages, and brief design approaches and the installation subjects and maintenance procedures. And then we'll touch on the other system support these three. Um, and then we'll go to, uh, to the fire protection system design steps uh, for existing systems for if you happen to go to a site for an inspection, what points that you can check. Then we'll finish with the uh, Q&A session. So the sprinkler system is the most common system of all, I think, in most of the project we see them. So we'll have a, a quick introduction, myths, components, installation and a design approach. Um, I think you, you already you, you all hear about like heads, pumps, that tanks, design code, hazard classification, like if, at some point it became part of these discussions. But I think we should go and step back and have a look at what actually this system is and what, what we are trying to teach you. What are these discussion, discussions and debates all, all about? So all these are all about So simply the sprinkler is like a pipe neck network that will deliver sufficient water from the source at a certain pressure to the fire. So it needs reliable water supply, correctly sized components. So as you can imagine, the, the, the fire load is not same in an office environment compared to a warehouse. And, and in the warehouse fire, you need more water, a larger system compared to an office system. Um, the old discussion is about to optimize this system. Like if you provide an over engineered system to the office, you will be spending more. Uh, but if you put uh, an under designed system in the warehouse, your system will not be able to cope with the fire and will not be, uh, will be, will be overwhelmed. So this is all about, um, um, I mean, yeah, this is the key point that you need to keep in mind when you are going, going into those discussions. I think we all have some myths. So um, the most common three is the, the sprinkler heads leak and most of the clients are very reluctant to have the sprinklers. But in fact, one head in every 16 million of them uh, leaks accidentally uh, if it's properly designed and installed. Um, so that's why the sprinkler head leakage uh, should not be a reason to omit and this omit in the in the in the first place uh, the second one is the hollywood effect that they activate everywhere at once um no the sprinkler heads have individual bulbs that are heat operated and wherever the fire is uh, that many sprinkler heads will be actuated yes there are some deluge special systems with open heads but they are specifically used in in special areas like fuel tank areas or engine areas so the the, the sprinkler heads you're going to see in uh, general occupancies will have uh, individual bulbs um the third one is oh we will have sprinklers and they will activate and create water damage well that's also said by the fire brigade that when they go to the site if they face a larger uh, fire and they will be using more extinguishment water compared to a sprinkler to, uh, area because the sprinkler will be controlling the fire size and the total extinguishment water used on that fire will be less. And, and again, it's been proven by many times. Um, the effectiveness of sprinklers are, are very clear by statistics. Uh, so some facts from the NFPA uh, report is showing these. Um, the the death rates for in, in the propo in fires with sprinklers is almost 10 times less uh, in areas where you have the automated suppression system. Um, property damage also is is much less, almost three times less with the sprinklers compared to non sprinkler areas. And and also the, the sprinklers 95 percent of the time achieves to to control the fire to the room of origin. 
So we can put the reliability pillars of a fire protection systems like this. So it should be properly designed, correctly installed and well maintained after the installation. So if one of these is wrong, then the system has some issues. So all of them has to be perfect and starting from obviously from the design stage. So we'll come back to this slide later on, like how to check for existing systems. So if you look at as an introduction to the general principles of the components, the sprinkler components, in the, uh, first of all, anything touching the sprinkler system uh, needs to be specifically listed or approved for that use. Um, so in the UK, we have the loss prevention uh, certification board, LPCB approval, and the German VDS or the American insurance company FM approvals, or the underwriter lab laboratories UL listing from the US. So if, if the components are one of these or, or multiple of these, then for the intended use, then that, that, that is the one that we should be using for that uh, purpose. So obviously they will come with some uh, uh, in installation limitations, so they, they need to be followed as well. And, and all the components should be undamaged. Um, especially in existing sites or old sites, you will see some painted overheads. So that's a, a, a big no. Uh, and you will see in, in a moment in a video why. Um, and it's also very common. The sprinkler heads come from the manufacturer or, or, or the warehouses in a, with this orange cap uh, as a protective cover during uh, transportation. But in many sites, they forget to remove it. And, and I've been to, for example, on, uh, to health hospital. I'm, I'm not going to say where uh, or which country. And when I was waiting in the waiting room, I saw those orange heads and, and I was un uncomfor uncomfortable and I was the only one, I think. And then I emailed the hospital admin after that. And in my follow-up uh, visit, they were all removed. So it's it's very common. Like uh, you you might see after this uh, maybe session uh, in some areas as well. Uh, another thing is the valves. The sprinkler valves uh, should be obviously according to the uh, proportional to the floor protected floor area. So these are the general things that you should consider about the the components of the sprinklers. Uh, when it comes to the installation, uh, one of the key points is the sprinkler spacing um, uh, and also the concealed heads. The concealed heads uh, are available in different colors from manufacturers without compromising those listings we mentioned. So that's why the architects has uh, lots of options when, when ordering one, but they again, they should not be tempered with or painted on site. Um, the sidewall sprinkler heads, um, it's a bit sometimes confusing about its location. Um, it still needs a flat ceiling above it to be able to cap capture that heat, um, although they are located on the on the sidewall like that instead of on the ceiling. Um, in some cases, they we see like they are trying to put on atri around the atrium without any activation, but you should come uh, it shouldn't be alone, it should be a, an interlocked system, for example. Yeah, and installation general principles. Again, the sprinkler heads uh, location are very well regulated from by the, or by the design codes, uh, the distance from the walls, distance between the sprinklers. So if, if, if they are too close to each other, basically they will wet each other and the other one will not be activated. And and all of a sudden you will end up with a larger fire, in fact. So having the sprinklers too close on the ceiling is not actually a, a good solution. Or if you have too wide between each other, then those covered areas uh, will not overlap and you will have some uh, gaps in between. Uh, another thing is the obstructions. So the, the sprinkler head discharge uh, needs to create that a beautiful umbrella arch uh, so that it can protect the fire underneath. Uh, but if there are obstructions next to that, it, it will be it will not be created. So in in this video, we'll sh uh, see it. Uh, and uh, the ventilation, another point is uh, there's always a, a saga between the smoke control and 
the sprinter actuation. Um, so the ventilation systems should be engineered that they won't delay the sprinkler actuation by letting the heat away. Uh, and if possible, the manual smoke vents should be preferred uh, in sprinklered uh, areas. Um, so the services we can provide to our clients is the design, the full design of these systems we discussed. We can carry out the third party design review for the uh, ones that have been designed by others. We can inspect the site, existing site or uh, ongoing con installation site. Uh, for those sites that have sprinklers but have no documents at all uh, about design, we can do the reverse engineering to understand if they are uh, good to go or we can carry out gap analysis to upgrade the systems and so on. We can work with any sector, basically with any standard, British, American standard and engineered solutions. So our advantage, our selling point is that we are independent. We are not linked to an installer and manufacturer. Uh, we don't over design the system um, and we, we can be cost benefit approach to design. Uh, and we can optimize these systems. My name is Arda Baydemir. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions and book your CPD session in the link below to learn more. I'm here to support you.